This says uh, a vendor viewpoint on the MITRE ATT&CK uh, uh, framework, really, and the evaluations. And it's strange for me to say that uh, because I'm actually uh, a CISO, um, a chief security officer. So I spend most of my days as a practitioner. Um, some thought leadership, maybe 20% of my time goes on external activities, uh, but about 80% is spent internally. <clears throat> I'm also visiting fellow at the National Security Institute. And as I said, I know a lot of you guys. But you should feel free to write down my contact information. It's pretty easy. Sam at cyberreason.com and at Sam J. Curry. And, and again, thank you for having me here, guys. So um, here's here's the agenda that I'd planned. Um, I, I'm going to try to keep it to about <laughs> 20, 25 minutes and lots of time for questions if we can do that. Um, and so I'll just mark the start here. John, does that work for you guys? Yeah, that sounds perfect. OK, so so let's 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 jump right in. Normally, if we were face to face, I'd ask for a show of hands on things, but I'm not going to tempt the, the presentation gods with that um, uh, for how many of you are familiar with it. And I know there's a mix of uh, of familiarity with the attack framework and testing and different functions that are attending right now. So my hope is that uh, I, they say you should never start a presentation with an apology, but I apologize if uh, if if some of this is elementary or if it's too advanced, uh, it, it's hard to sort of hit the nail on the head. But um, well, let's start with a short background on the framework itself. <clears throat> so uh, the MITRE ATT&CK framework was actually founded and started as a body of work at MITRE, which is a not-for-profit organization um, uh, that, that tries to do scientific type advancements or technological advancements in 2013. I think it really first started to get acclaim and attention in 2017. And it's based on a globally accessible uh, knowledge base about very specific attackers. And it represents a taxonomy of, think of it as uh, more than a kill chain. So um, how do you advance the idea of the progression of an attacker? Uh, and it's based on real world observation. So it's not purely theoretical and, and it adapts and changes. And I hope that comes through in this presentation. It has morphed over time and the team is constantly seeking to automate collection and to make the taxonomy more effective and it has many many uses so i, I want to put this screen up now and just say um, there's many components to mitre attack uh, up at the top you see evaluations this one bugs me a little look i'm, I'm a vendor but it's not designed to say who won the mitre attack evaluation uh, you'll see a lot of vendors as soon as one of these rounds completes and 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 testing results for round three are about to go public. They'll say, we won it, and they'll find some way of skewing the data that makes them number one, and you see it constantly, but that's not what it's about. Yes, you can evaluate products, but the output's actually quite, quite sophisticated uh, in the sense that it's meant, I think, to help security programs figure out what products fit best, and it is actually a really good evaluation tool for security programs. Um, you can use it for adversary emulation and simulation. Uh, and the framework contains a number of um, components. So right in the center, uh, <clears throat> the language is very attack specific. So tactics is a term that refers to, think of them as major stages of, of the evolution of an attacker through an environment. Uh, they're, they're the major milestones that an attacker gets on their progression. The techniques themselves are the things they do that get lined up in the tactics as categories. And you'll see a graphic representation of that. Um, there are procedures and mitigations, there's software, there's groupings, there's all kinds of information here. And there's also um, a community and there's actually an attack con now. And I would say that the attack framework is both often overhyped um, and it's off, often underappreciated. And if, if a practitioner is using it simply to decide, <clears throat> excuse me, who's the best product out there, they're probably using it wrong. Um, and if they uh, take the time, they can use it to really guide the evolution of, um, of their SOC practices and of their incident response very, very effectively. So uh, let's, let's dive in. So how do, how do you really leverage MITRE ATT&CK? Um, like, uh, these are the three things you want to do. First of all, understand your current state. If you're if you're a security person, um, the second is plan improvements, and the third is define where you want to get to. This gives us a universal language in many ways, and detail in how to do that as a community and as uh, as security practitioners. So the use cases, let let's dive into those a bit. 
Um, adversary emulation is not an easy thing to do. Um, I'm not a fan of pen testing as a way of measuring where the security teams are doing well. I um, I liken it to a basketball game. If if I if I filmed a single play in a basketball game and froze the frame and said who won the game, you wouldn't have enough information. Um, there are many many plays in a basketball game, and you need to really see over time how the flow of the game is going. And the same is true of security. So doing adversary emulation is useful, not just for bayonetting the wounded and doing a, a pen test, but for figuring out step by step. This is more the purple teaming side. Um, how are we doing? How do we find this? How do we catch that? Where are we strong? Where are we weak? What do we need to plug into this? Um, SOC maturity assessment, cyber threat intelligence, but also you can get into developing the right analytics at the right place to find uh, attackers and to find behavior that you want to focus on or do triage and a defensive gap analysis. So um, all of this is to say, if a security program needs to do these things, guess what? MITRE ATT&CK is a really good tool for uh, organizing and orchestrating these types of use cases. So implementing it, um, I, I, I did this at uh, an attack con a couple of years ago um, with a colleague of mine, Israel Barak, who, who came up with this, uh, this uh, cycle, so credit where it's due. Um, you take the MITRE ATT&CK framework and you can, you know, you can pull this data uh, and you can establish, OK, so let's let's um, let's take this as input and we're going to now come up with an adversary emulation plan. Then you run an attack. Uh, you see where the alerts pop up, how you do hunting. Can you find these steps as somebody progresses through the environment and report on them? Obviously, that can trigger IR, but then it feeds into a feedback loop to improve it. So rather than doing a pen test once a year or doing vulnerability scans just once a month and hope, crossing your fingers and hoping you do well, this is a tool to be able to take real libraries, test the, the at peacetime, test the environment, and tighten how you behave as a security practitioner. And that's how I use it. Um, <clears throat> this is an aggressive uh, way to approach things, but I can, I can use this now as a scientific way of saying where am I good or bad in my own internal um, my own internal uh, uh, processes. Having said that, um, I sell my company sells an EDR solution and uh, an endpoint protection solution, much like many of you do. Um, it also says that I can I can tell my product side because some of this is is a vendor uh, uh, perspective. I can now tell my product side guys, you know, I'm a I'm patient zero. We dog food here. Here's where I need you to improve the product. I can also go to the services side and say. You can go in and be an advisor to companies. Don't go in there uh, as a product marketer and say, look, we won the MITRE ATT&CK um, uh, evaluation. Aren't we the best? You can do that, and there will be some degree of crowing about it. But in the end, what you should be doing is instead having a deeper set of conversations with the practitioners if you're a vendor. Um, and um, it's interesting. There's no output from this that says, oh, somebody scored a 71 versus an 85. It, it actually doesn't work that way. That's all done post facto, generally speaking, so after the fact. So this eye test, there will be no test afterwards, but um, this is the MITRE uh, attack matrix for enterprise. And I want to emphasize for enterprise because there are other matrices. There's also, uh, I'll mention it later, there's a mobile matrix, which is similar, but it's unique to mobile. And there's also a, um, uh, uh, an ICS matrix, and there, and there are others too. Uh, that they've been talking about. So at the moment, um, if you look at this, uh, there are 12 columns. The columns are called tactics. Um, and inside of each tactic is a set of techniques. And um, this visualization is one, one that we did. If you go to the MITRE ATT&CK framework website, you'll see uh, they've got very good visualizations as well. But you can actually build some pretty good tools and some folks have put some up on GitHub that are pretty good to download and use and some interesting visualizations. <clears throat> but you can think of it as this is the menu of things that a, an attacker could do, and some will appear in multiple places, some of these tactics, um, some of these techniques rather, but it's a categorization, it's a taxonomy. It's now a, you can plot the, pro, the progression of an attacker through this matrix. And then you can sit down with your defensive team and say, so which pathways through here based on real world practices and the libraries that uh, MITRE makes available, um, could we, in fact, uh, where do we have weaknesses? Um, where are we strong? Where do we have to invest? And and that's incredibly useful as a tool because a lot of what <clears throat> what's done is 
is seat of the pants. We have very, very smart analysts, uh, men and women who have honed and crafted their trade, but but peeling it apart and breaking it down to this level gives us an ability to build on it. And I think that's a, a very important point when dealing with the uh, attack framework in general. So um, a little bit of a primer on the uh, on the evaluations uh, section, and, and this is where the vendor hype and hubbub comes from. <clears throat> so there have been three so far. Uh, they do simulate real world scenarios. I'm going to walk you through the three that have happened. Um, they tend to be focused on detections. They tend to be focused on finding the moment, the tool, the, 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 to borrow the lingo of the attack framework itself, the technique. Um, it, they tend to cover a subset of the whole framework. No, there's no attacker out there that's doing everything that they know how to do. So the libraries that MITRE has are very attacker specific. Um, and I want to emphasize MITRE has no bias and there's no financial factors here. And I, I'm emphasizing that because I know AMSO is big on, on ethical testing and how to approach that. But uh, if you go into these evaluations, there's a flat fee to do this based on the real costs of, of hosting and staging this uh, and a price model that is pretty much universal. It's, it's not a pay to play thing. So uh, they're a not for profit organization. Um, again, no scores, no rankings uh, or who's better or worse. Um, and they do mark up how detections are done. And it's done in a very controlled environment. So, so let's dive in a little bit. Uh, round one had 12 vendors. Uh, it simulated um, real world scenarios. Um, APT3 in this case, which is attributed to China's Ministry of State Security. Um, of the then 11 tactics, you'll notice there were, if you were paying attention, there were 12 on the screen that I showed you. That's the current framework. At the time, there were only 11. They added the last uh, tactic at the end, which is what happens after the fact. So only 10 of 11 tactics then were tested. And of the 223 technique categories, um, there were 56 tested by this. And, and to understand this, it's a very controlled simulation. Um, effectively, you've got uh, three uh, target systems that are non-production systems set up in a lab-like way, and two uh, attacker systems that they're going to run the attacks from. And they're going to say, we ran number one, show us that you found it, show us that you saw it. And it wasn't shared beforehand who the attacker would be. So here are the different uh, uh, technique uh, or the detection types and the modifiers that you could get for each one of these techniques that gets executed. Um, and uh, this has changed. So don't put too much investment into this. I'm going to emphasize changes round one to round two and round two to round three. So when they did this now nearly, uh, I guess, three years ago, we're 2021, uh, you could get these results. So they run, on, they run a technique and it says none. They run a technique and they say, yes, OK, there's data in your system of record. Uh, and they would run this on EDR systems. By the way, it can be applied to more than that. Uh, but they said, do you have data here such that the there is forensic information or something you could hunt on to find it did you trigger an indicator of compromise meaning you found it you had data and you alerted because it was matching a known bad um <clears throat> was there enrichment um which means did you bring context to it um and then or did you trigger this not just telemetry maybe there was no indicator of compromise was it you flagged it as a bad, inherently bad statistically perhaps or uh, of, a, of, a, of a class of behavior that you know is bad, or did you get specific and say, ah, ah, ah it's this technique, whether or not you use the language of, of MITRE at the time, although a lot of companies now do, did you flag it as something this specific behavior is confirmed bad and get some specificity in there? And then you could get three tags. And I want to emphasize this because MITRE is really trying to improve this. Um, delayed is code for one of two things. Delayed was something you could get on a detection that meant either uh, you had a batch process that was running. So maybe um, <clears throat> maybe every hour or so you go through and you do a calculation, right? You have an offline process that does its thing. Or it means a mechanical Turk. That means some human being, because we've only got three systems being targeted, was watching the process tree and said, what is that? And said, okay, I'm going to go do some research and then updates the system manually. Um, and uh, the, the original constraints were non-services based, but some of that still happened because the, the, the target systems were usually uh, running on a cloud, their server side on the cloud in a cloud context. Configuration change, that one's pretty 
pretty rough. What it says is you, you, you had to update or change the running system during the test to find it. It's their way of saying somebody cheated. Uh, and tainted. Tainted sounds terrible. It's not. Um, the word taint in English is not a good word. It doesn't have good connotations. In fact, one vendor after the results said, we're the only ones with no tainted scores. And that's not a good thing because tainted actually means inferred or correlated or colored. So if you're in a, if for instance, you're in a behavioral chain, one thing is known bad and it in, essentially inherits the, the certain properties from the first one. It's code for correlation or inheritance. And that's not a bad thing. So this vendor rapidly changed their blog when they got ridiculed, but these things happen. Um, <clears throat> So some takeaways, no scores or rankings, uh, you, really important to pay attention to types. And, and what MITRE did was they said, we ran product X and here's the screenshots of how it worked. Remember, it's supposed to help practitioners. Um, very useful for unbiased technical insight and product capabilities. A lot, some people started to put up POC services, so proof of concepts uh, for, as part of sales cycles or uh, to prove that somebody could actually do something in a, in a practice and useful for self-assessments. But everybody, of course, started to to announce we're the best, whatever. Um, uh, in fact, Josh Zalonis at Forrester, he put up some useful scripts on GitHub uh, for being able to compute scores. So if you wanted to look at how they did on certain criteria or using some of what he thought was important, it would output scores. And of course, then everybody starts marketing we're the best with Josh's score, whatever, and he later regretted that to some degree. So round two came along <clears throat> a little while later, and this one, 21 vendors. So it's grown enormously. Everybody wants to get in on it. Uh, and this simulated APT29. Uh, this one's attributed to the Russian government and, and, and looked a lot like, in fact, almost exactly like the DNC hack. Um, it was uh, really covered, and now there were 12 tactics, it covered 10 of them and 58 techniques. And so this um, MITRE Ingenuity put out this graphic. Uh, it was a way of looking at it. Notice some of the names and some of the labels and some of the modifiers have changed. So none and telemetry stay, telemetry stay the same, general, and then you can get specific, are you flagging it as a stage of the attack or technique? And notice now the word MSSP appears here because managed services could be included. They took the notion of a mechanical Turk, someone behind the scenes and said, you know what? If you want to have people behind the scenes, do it. We'll flag it as an MSSP detected thing and that's fine, right? So it's a different way of looking at it. And the modifiers changed. Instead of using tainted, that had gone. So now it was, uh, you know, you could have correlated uh, delayed manual processing still existed. Uh, config change still existed, but innovative was a way of flagging. Hey, this was found in a way that would have been more than just going on the basis of past behavior. You would have found this and inferred it in an interesting way. So some changes, of course, I'm going to just highlight for you, and I'm, I'm conscious of time. Um, uh, things IOC still appeared enrichment, general and specific behavior, but MSSP was added. Tainted changed. Um, they have this notion of host interrogation and residual artifacts, so you could go back and get more through an MSSP program, and the notion of delay and config changes uh, persisted. So some takeaways, uh, again, no scores or rankings, and that, that I think is a really good thing. You'll see a lot of these continue, still true, um, that you need to pay attention to the details. You need to say, okay, I'm looking at product X, one of these 21 vendors, what is it telling me about the way that that vendor would fit with my program? In fact, the nuances only really make sense if you use the tool to some degree to analyze your own, uh, your own practice and for self-assessments. So round three, and this one just happened. And this one is now going into cybercrime a bit more. We're up to 30 vendors. Um, targets are typically US retail, restaurant banks. It's Carbonac, Fin7. And uh, here, 11 of 12 tactics, 65 techniques. Uh, this is again from MITRE Ingenuity. Of course, it's always evolving. There's new ways to look at it. And there's now a notion that some ways are better than others of detecting. And so um, it, there's this notion of progression, right? It goes from nothing to telemetry to general as before, and then tactic and technique is persisting from that round too. Um, and now the modifiers are simpler, delayed and config change are the really important ones. So here's an example of an atomic test, right? Um, in this case, uh, you could go to the MITRE attack framework website, you could pull it down and it would say, here's how you do system service discovery. Um, it actually gives you what to run a command prompt to run these attacks. The library, in other words, that they provide for say Carbonac or for a, you know, APT3, it's pretty, it's pretty useful for, for a practitioner to be able to just plug and run with this. 
Um, in terms of around three uh, protection categories, um, they looked at the detections themselves and they said, okay, nothing uh, doesn't apply, nothing and blocked. And there, was some, there were some issues in round two where the test harnesses sometimes interfered with some tools, but the tools have both had a chance to interact with, uh, with, with the MITRE framework and, um, and to adapt to that. But sometimes you block it and then you have to turn the blocking off and see, does some, do you catch this attack at a later stage as well? So what's the future of MITRE attack? Um, I, I, I've noticed uh, they're not done. Uh, they turned it around and instead of just lionizing the attack risk progression, they now have MITRE shield, which is a, a, the defense equivalent. So not just what's the attacker's journey, what's the defender's journey? And what are we learning about active defense and engagement? So in a, in a sense, it only has eight categories in the MITRE shield. It is saying that these tools should allow you to address the attack framework and then the mapping between them. Um, this is the shield matrix. Uh, I mentioned there were other matrices, but for shield, you can see this is not the progression of an attack now. Instead, it is the, the sort of stages of the hero's journey, right? Um, how do you collect information? How do you contain, detect, disrupt? Uh, how do you test these things? Which is, I think, just as useful in its own way, especially if you, if you buy that, for me, MITRE attack uh, was about practitioners, then SHIELD gives them something to map that to and figure out what techniques they want to use in defense. And it also helps you understand, well, where do vendors fit? Um, and what do they do for me? <clears throat> this is the attack matrix. Uh, MITRE attack uh, for mobile. You'll notice it's not the same, especially technique-wise. Uh, some of the tactics look very similar, but they have a matrix for that. And um, also for ICS, which is a different one. So for industrial control systems, uh, there's uh, new and emerging um, uh, material there. So uh, in the interest of, of, of time, and uh, we've gone through the meat of the presentation, I'd like to open it up for questions or for conversation. Uh, I use MITRE attack Myself, um, I, I'm a big believer in it and have been for the last three years. Yes, it gets overhyped. Yes, vendors go crazy with it. But I think it really is a good set of tools um, for practitioners. And vendors who interact with it well, I think will be well treated and provide a lot of value to their customers as well.